Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is The Faces Stargist and welcome back to Hogwarts Legacy. The last episode we were actually lining up to head on over here to the mine. Yeah, but we actually have a bunch of Ragnarok loyalists around here, which we just have to quickly take care of. Ah, uh, because why not? We also exhausted our collection options. That is, we filled them up. Nice. And bye bye. Bye bye. Get over here. Bam, 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 bam. And bombard. Okay, get over here. It's like scorpions get over here, but a little bit less cool. Okay, nice. And the navel directly to the head. Which has resulted for many a death for the brave adventurers. There you go. Oh, nicely done. We actually have an armored troll now. Nice. Come on. I really like how I managed to dodge that. Okay, nice. We just gotta keep at it. Nice. Perfect. Okay, good. There is the mine entrance. Okay, alright, this is one of the main quests. We're getting ready for our owls. So yeah, this will be... Well, I gather a very important mission. No sign of Lodgok out here. He must be inside already. Could be, or he's a filthy traitor. You never know. Mm -hmm. That's the thing when you trust people. When you fully trust people, you're Rebellion. just opening yourself up for betrayal. You should trust them with a healthy dose of uh, skepticism and a healthy dose of uh, just paranoia. Because generally just blindly trusting people is not good. It can lead to disappointment or it could even lead to you getting yourself hurt. Or even worse, you could fuck your entire life up. Like marrying the wrong girl. Even though you're madly in love, you have to be paranoid, my dude. You have to check everything out. Getting deeper into the mine. Yeah, let's use it. Just like Gringotts, but I'm in the driver's seat this time. Okay, nice. Something seems wrong. How deep will this take? Redrock's going to be pleased with our progress. Is he though? Who was on that car? Here we are with his car, will ya? That has to be the end up ahead. Well. Rebellion. I guess that was the end. We still haven't found our trusted compadre. Generally, everybody will want to use you for something or other. <laughs> Even genuine friends. Okay, right, that needs to be pulled. Even genuine friends will eventually stab you in the back. But that doesn't mean you should be a bitter old fool. That just means that you have to keep your wits about you. And just generally be careful in life. I have a couple of people who I talk to, we sometimes hang out. But if I really needed something from them, they generally would not be able to do that. At least I believe so. I could be wrong. I know that I've uh, found myself helping a lot of people a lot of the time. Because they just kind of feel the obligation since we are friends, you know? And there we go. 
But that can always backfire on you, you know. For example, uh, opa. For example, work. If you were to consistently give, I don't know, 110 percent, eventually you'll burn yourself out, and you won't be able to give 110 percent all the time. Or perhaps, maybe, people don't deserve 100% of your time, just in general. Perhaps they only deserve less than that. It really depends on who you're looking at and who you're talking about, you know. I hope that makes sense. You, you shouldn't always be giving all of yourself everything about yourself you should uh, in a sense be kind of reserved and basically just hang back a little bit don't put your all into uh, relationships and stuff like that until you're 100% certain because you have people who do nothing and they expect everything to be done for them to them but they won't do a single thing to you so that's kind of a weird position to be in. That's a parasitic relationship. Where basically somebody's just leeching off of you. You basically get nothing from that. Yeah, there we go. Right, hold on. Ah, uh, Guardian Leviosa. And let's put this... Well, okay, like that. So I can actually climb it. Uh, right, like I was saying, you, you just gotta figure it out. You'll get hurt and burnt along the way. That there's no doubts about that. I did, and. I helped them move, I helped uh, people basically do a lot of things and whenever I needed a little bit of help, ah, we can't do it, we have to go to a music concert and I was like, oh whoa, and I, that was a bit of a wake up call actually for me in all honesty, with the type of friends that I've had and yeah, you know they're like, oh okay I was actually being evicted and uh, I called up, you know, my close friends, at least what I fought for my close friends, yeah, you know, like I need to move, it's on this weekend and some local band, not even like, you know, Iron Maiden, Sabaton, you know, something that you most likely hear once in a lifetime in your country, you know, it, it wasn't anything too spectacular, you know, it, it was a local band. Uh, which sucked cocks, but that's neither here nor there. And they're like, oh no, yeah, we'll definitely be there, blah blah blah, but eventually it ended up that they couldn't come because they had to get to, uh, what do you call it? To that gig, and that was what was actually keeping them from coming to assist me, their friend. And I actually fucked them all off right there. One less human to worry about. And I just said, yeah, I don't need you for anything else. Lose my number. And that remains true. I haven't talked to them in a long, long time. Then, later on, I still haven't actually learned my lesson. And I was still a bit of a, a bit stupid, you know? Uh, I found another group of friends. And we were chilling, we actually went to a concert of some sort. And what ended up happening was they ditched me to go and smoke weed. And when I called them like, hey guys, where are you at? Because I didn't have any public transport. You know, the plan was for all of us to stay at one guy's apartment. Yeah, they're like, alright, oh, we just went over the bridge, that means they're halfway done through. We kind of forgot about you. Uh, if you want, come over, if not, uh, I don't know, dude. 
literally what they said, I still remember it to this day, and I said basically I'll see you in 40 days. And what that means, uh, if you're from the Orthodox faith, after somebody dies, after 40 days you go to the graveyard with the Pope and he does his thing. Too late for you to learn the error of your ways. So yeah, that basically means you're dead to me. It's kind of really harsh to say that, because like in 40 Rebellion. days the soul leaves the body or whatever. I don't personally believe that, but it is a saying. It's an awfully rude and cruel saying. Let's not get it twisted, because it basically means you're dead to me and I'll see you in 40 days to guide your soul. And basically guiding that soul would mean sending, in this context, sending the soul to hell. Now, it could be quite possible that I've grossly butchered Rebellion. that tradition. And that saying as well, but I can interpret it that way when I said it, and I meant it. And the gall of some people, the nerve. One of the guys that actually, well, I don't really want to say betrayed me like that, but he did. Uh, whoa. Uh, he hits me up because now I have a nice job in a nice company, which has actually brought me very much joy and very much stability in my life. He has hit me up so I could uh, arrange a job offer for him. You know, put in a good word with my bosses so they can accept him. I told him no. And then, being a little bit of a petty idiot... Rebellion. Well... I told him that, uh, no. Oh, it wasn't really petty. Now that I think about it, I could have went to my bosses and said, not a chance in hell. But, I don't know. I didn't actually want to put myself in a position where they would need to, where I would threaten, you know, to... Okay, it would appear that my window settings have been tampered with and my microphone volume has actually been lowered by 50% this entire time. Now, I've looked over the footage and everything appears to be more or less okay. So, now I shall do another test. This would explain why I had to tinker with my Space Marine Let's Play. Yeah, this is actually much, much, much better. Like, holy Jesus. Alright, I was actually on a tangent or something. I kind of forgot what I was talking about, but... Opa! Yeah, that's a loyalist commander. There you go, one bombarder for you. And... Slash. I really love the Slash spell. Nice. Okay, there is one more guy over here. Bam! <laughs> okay, we're back to normal sound-wise, and now I can actually talk a little bit. Off the beaten path, I suspect. Yeah, of course, it's always off the beaten path. Uh, there's nothing really else to it. Uh, let us collect all of our goodies. That's a lot of uh, loot that we have. But like I was saying, never give 100% at your work. You should always be at uh, 60% in all honesty. Then some days, uh, you're just gonna want to give it your all. You know? You know, give like 90%. And they're gonna be like, oh wow, he's actually trying, he's good. You know, I hope I can get to Ranrock before Logcock does. I know he's like very good. He's a good employee. He does his stuff, etc., etc. Okay. Oh, I was actually supposed to head on over here. Okay. Now that I kind of feel bad about that. We're actually just going to head on back down. Ah, uh, yeah. 
But if you always give 100%, whenever you have a bad day, that's going to be very noticeable. And trust me, you do not want to have bad days where it's very noticeable. This way, if you have a bad day, oh, he's slightly off, it's no big deal. You know. But when you have a really good day, when you're really feeling like working it, they're gonna say, damn, boy. Okay, let's see where this will actually lead me. They're honestly gonna be like, oh yeah, he, he has his stuff going for him. Because generally looking, if you really want to, you could give 150% every single day. But that's not really sustainable in the long term. I'll be completely honest with you. If it's your own business, give it 500 fucking percent. You know. But if, it, if you're just, you know, working for a salary or something, always work at 60%. Because, you know, it's better than 50% and it's generally more acceptable. Same as relationships, never give way too much. That is, never give more than you are receiving. Because if you are basically receiving nothing, uh, you, should, you shouldn't really continue investing into that. Now, you could invest uh, in order for it to actually, you know... Uh, pay off long term, but that is a gamble. That is something that you need to uh, just go ahead and process yourself whether or not that's actually sustainable and whether or not you want to do that and go down that rabbit hole. Generally, when I look into friendships, because I don't have that many of them, I can pick this off later. Okay, excellent. So basically, like I was saying, never give 100% because if nobody's going to give 100% to you, you shouldn't really be giving 100% to them because basically what ends up happening is you end up being used. But long term investments can pay off. If you really want to, I don't know, be an idiot and try to change her or something. That is an option that you have, certainly. But this is something that you should invest your time into. For example, like in friendships. Uh, if I am the one who has to initiate conversations and, you know, basically the invites for a hangout every single day, that is every single time, but not every single day, I mean, we're all adults here, more or less, you know, we have stuff to do, you have jobs, you have obligations, but if you're the one that's constantly just, you know, acquiring about, hey, when are we going to hang out, it's been too long, bam, or you know, stuff like that then you're basically just in a one-way relationship. That's at least how I look at it. Because it doesn't make really any sense uh, for you to do that. And perhaps I should have sculpted the way out before I blew up all of the pillars, but uh, yeah, you actually have to have that foresight. Ah, there we go. There's the asshole. Is unfortunate. No matter, we will build another. I found this one looking outside. Lord Gok, come to make amends, little brother. I came to stop this. What is this you've brought me? Are you all right? Oh, 
never understand you, Lord Gok. So, Gollum, that witch did not consider you an equal. She, like all wizard kind, sought only to use you. You're wrong, Ranrock. The young ones are especially deceitful. They are taught to hide their disgust for us as they exploit us. Astonishing that our ancestors ever trusted each other. All this time, looking everywhere for the final repository, searching in vain for Bragboard's last journal. Wasted my time chasing a child. And my little brother knew where it was all along. Oh my lord. I don't need you. I don't need any of you. I was bringing it to you. You are a traitor to our kind. Oh, yo. How do you miss an Avada Kedavra? And why didn't you rescue the goblin? Poor Lord Gok. Dead by his brother's hand. No oh, that's why he couldn't. We need the Avada Kedavra spell if we're going to stop him, I mean, it's only logical that that is exactly what we need. Okay, let's go. Okay, so here is the location of the final uh, repository, uh, which is kind of weird. Now that I think about it. to meet me in the map chamber. He and the keepers need to know Ranrock has that journal and knows where the final repository is. Okay. Let's see quest wise. What we have I'm not doing anything. Okay, right, I don't have anything. Alright, what we can actually do is just head on over to Hogwarts. Head on to the room of requirement. Uh huh. I have no idea what portions you're talking about, but okay, I trust you. There we go. Go ahead and identify everything. Okay, that's good. And where? Wow, I actually got a lot of them. Okay, no noticeable upgrade. Face wear. No noticeable upgrade. Uh, 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 uh. Headwear, no upgrade. That uh, edition is locked at level 34. So I'm just going to keep that one. The rest I can sell, basically. Okay. San Bakar's trial. Okay, so this will be the final Keeper Trial. Nice. Before we do that, let us scout for any... ...side quests. Um, that could be found here. No, let's head on over to Hogsmeade then. To unload everything. Then we'll do the final trial. Recently I had a Windows update and that actually messed up all of my settings. I actually had to distort and contort and basically do a lot of stuff on two videos to make the audio a little bit better. And now that I actually found out what it was, I'm actually kind of pissed. Because I didn't change that, it actually reverted to a default. And that sort of pisses me off, in all honesty. Because I didn't do that, I didn't want to do that, and I... Uh, Windows had no right to change that without, you know, informing me. But Windows is Windows and they do what they want. Now, I don't know if 
some of you are actually working in the IT industry. Uh, I don't know if you're working in the IT industry, but if you get a Windows laptop, it's vastly different than a regular laptop in the terms of uh, upgrades. Uh, not upgrades, uh, updates. Like, vastly different. And I'm talking astronomically different. The same, if you were to take the same updates, I know a personal laptop. You would have, uh, the, the update would be done in, let's say, five minutes. And the business laptop, the one that you <laughs> use for work, it will be done in, like, uh, 40 minutes. It's insane. All of the bloatware and everything, it's honestly insane. Ranrock is moving more quickly than we could have anticipated. This mm -hmm. is grave news indeed. We had hoped for more time to discuss the best path forward. Let us hear what the student has to say. Professor, you received my owl. Ranrock has the last of Bragpool's journals. He killed Lodgok to get it. He knows where the last repository is. Godric's heart. Lodgok. Lodgok and Ranrock were brothers. Lodgok was bringing the journal to me. Ranrock is a monster. We need to know where the final repository is. Surely this changes things. Ranrock has Bragbor's journals and knows where the final repository is. We obliviated Bragbor. He kept journals? Why would he have documented all of this? He didn't know what we were containing. Isadora told Bragbor about the magic when she asked him to build a container for her. I've seen her memories. Isadora left memories for someone to find? You know what she did? Her memories showed what she did for her father, which I also saw in Professor Rookwood's pensive. And a conversation with Bragbor in which she expressed frustration about the limits being placed on her use of ancient magic. Based upon the memories they have seen, I believe our young friend is well aware of the grave circumstances in which we find ourselves. The next trial will involve an exceptional level of magical skill and a nuanced ability to interact with beasts. Find a face of stone and tendrils. I should advise you that you must engage with any beast that is part of the trial on your own. Professor Bakar will meet you in his pensive room. An exceptional level of magical skill? Nuanced ability to interact with beasts? Hmm. I suppose we should begin our search for a face of stone and tendrils. Whatever that may be. Very well. Professor Weasley has been keeping an eye on me. Perhaps we should meet there, so she has no reason to raise concerns with Professor Black. I shall see you near the coast. Perhaps then you can tell me a little more about the memories of Isadora that you witnessed. Okay, interesting. Uh, right. That's about 3.6 kilometers that way, but what I wanted to actually focus on, if we just head on over here, locate on map, bada bim bada boom. Holy jeebus, that that's really far off okay uh yeah let's go from to here and let's pick up everything that we can along the way uh the what do you call it the actual uh Imagine how inconvenient travel was before i invented blue powder. and i keep forgetting to download some sort of mod that actually shuts her up you know permanently but it is what it is. Cannot really complain that much. Who lives here? Possibly somebody very important. Okay, we actually do have a side quest here. No. Pardon? Were you calling to me? I was. I'm Marianne Moffat. Pleasure. Ah. Oh yes, the magical bird. Peculiar things, aren't they? Did you know them? I'm worried about a large albino, dear recall, known as... 
If I had her, I'd treat her like a Yeah. Seems you're more concerned with the feathers than the bird. Indeed. They'd pluck her feathers. I can't seem to rescue her, and I'm worried the day. Oh. I'll keep an eye out for a Oh, thank you. One last thing. She seems to spend her days in the hay. Be prepared to chase her. I sometimes wonder if she actually enjoys it. Okay. I suppose I should watch for Guanaira. At night, apparently. Guanaira. What a peculiar name that is. Okay, in any case, let us go ahead and find Guanaira. I don't know, I kind of like that name. Guanaira. It's not the worst possible name you could have. Guanaira. It's kind of growing on me, in all honesty. Uh, okay. This must be the Dirigal Den that Miss Moffat told me about. Now, where is Guanaira? There you go. Got her. Now we need to let Miss Moffat know. Yeah, nice. We're actually level 34. Which is exactly what I needed in order to equip the... The gear upgrade I have managed to acquire. Meow meow. Okay, and I do believe I bought the last upgrade I needed. What well, am I still waiting for? The upgrade in all of actuality. I believe I am still waiting for the upgrade. Hmm. Seems a pleasant enough little place. It is indeed. Oh, hello. It's more yeah, it was easy. Uh, not too bad. Don't be so humble. Well, may I have... Uh, of course. She has such exquisite. And she'll have a good life too, of course. Thank you so much for bringing me Gwen Naira. I shall keep her safe and only use her feather sparingly. I hope you really do, because if you don't, you're gonna get scucked. Okay. Yeah, this is about 300 meters this way, so not not really a big deal. Okay, nice. And I'll be perfectly honest, uh, actually, I could do some streams of just flying around the uh, Vada Kadavra in people. And actually doing all of the side quests as soon as I finish this. Hello, madam. I'm simply beside myself since Rokok. Uh, uh, I'm sorry to hear. Thank you. I appreciate you. Whilst on our morning constitutional the other day, South, they say that Henrietta was a paranoid recluse, filled her car. As we drew near, the morning sun reflected mm. off something in a. Okay. I'm not sick, but I'm not about to meddle with Merlin knows what's inside that. I'll try to find. Keep an eye out for. Oh, if someone does find him in the hideaway, they shall be well rewarded. I should be going. Okay, I mean... Revelio. Why not? That hideaway does sound intriguing. Perhaps I should investigate. For Rococo's sake. Yeah, yeah, for Rococo's sake and just for general money-wise. Because money is uh, very important. Yes, yes. Okay. That is uh, where, approximately. Uh, and of course, no full flames anywhere nearby. Well, okay, I could just fly there. I mean, it's not that terribly far off, in all honesty. I'll just use this as a sort of a speed booster. And we'll be there in a jiffy. Mm. This is a bit tricky, in all honesty. 
Uh, right, this uh, new quest available. What? In the shadow of the relic. <gasps> Avada Kedavra. I want it. I want it. Okay, we're gonna finish this one up. Then we will go and learn Avada Kedavra. That'll be the next episode with an appropriate title, of course. I god damn. You were out here for a walk, were you? If you're out here for a walk, I'm a fucking Mary Poppins. The castle where Miss Coffee's Niffler Ashwinders. I'd better find a way around them. Or perhaps through them. Alright, I already dealt with all of these guys. Well, since I'm here basically for the second time, I might as well do the astronomy thingy over here. Knowing the meat he's likely studied here. Yeah, who cares about the meat? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, we can actually rotate it like that as well, which is just perfect. Okay, hold on. You couldn't have given me a more complicated one if you wanted to. Okay. And yeah, this one seems like it's like it is what it is. Um, what about this one? Okay, this is so freaking stupid. Okay. If I could just find the four that's in the middle, I believe that would be it. I just need to find the four that are in the middle. So this is what I mean, this is actually pretty fucking stupid, and I don't really care. And let's drop on down, and we the side away. Right, I was already here. Let's actually... Dude, I wanted you to drop down there. I don't understand. They haven't. Because all of the Ashwinders are dead. So don't worry about Rococo. Not that you're actually worried about her, but still. Okay, right, she's somewhere over here, I guess. I should follow the treasure to find that Niffler. All right. Uh, Arresto momentum. There we go. Totally forgot about that. The treasure. Rococo must have been through here. Where she was. Yeah, there she is. I can see her. Um, treasure. Niffler's certainly leaving quite a trail. Yes, she is indeed. How the hell do I go down there? Okay, let's head on up here. Bam, bam. Oh. Bring me that. Wingardium Leviosa. Revelio. 
Okay. We need the feather spell on that one. And over here I need the incendio spell. I'm guessing that will open up the hole that's in the wall over here. There is this one over here. Which obviously has some sort of way to enter it I possibly by going through here okay now this is just another treasure well, okay I mean I don't mind me some treasure how on earth do I get down there it's even this one resetted Okay. There you go. Lumos. Aha. Oh my lord. I still don't understand what was that supposed to do. Okay. I feel like an absolute idiot. Okay, let's actually try going this way. Okay. Yeah, that is done, that is done. If we were to... Okay. If we were to head on over here. Like so. Okay, now this is only getting annoying. Okay. I was already here. Okay, this way then. Okay, this way makes sense. Okay. Am I stuck? Nah. Okay. This basically takes me to a prison cell. Okay. There you go. Oh, what was the point of this? Uh, well, I mean, I don't really mind. Just that I don't have a single clue as to where that goddamn Niffler could be. I know there was a lot of treasure over here. This should suck me in. No. This just leads to a dead end. This over here. Yeah, that does nothing. If I am to go over here. Okay. This leads nowhere. This is where I came from. And I need to head on up here. Okay, heading over here. Arresto momentoing that. 
now we're back here and if I were to drop down here Preparing. okay we have that thing with the chandeliers and whatnot we have that one Rebellion. and over here we don't have anything we have those two Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. No, it uh, all boils down to the fact that I'm an idiot. Uh, that's basically what it boils down to. And uh, there's basically nothing else to it besides the fact that I'm an idiot who cannot see the obvious thing that's in front of him. There you go. Yes, drop down. Don't be a little bitch. Okay. Get over here. Nice. Okay. Nice. Okay. You're activated. You're activated. There we go. Freaking hell. This niffle is a tricky one. Rebellion. Beast out of rescue range. There we go. Well, look off. Never realized how tiring it can be to capture a niffler. Really? You never realized that. Freaking love it how this takes me back to the entrance. Okay. <laughs> 